Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I have a rather interesting situation for you. Suppose you have a sample of cyclohexanone, this molecule, and you dissolve that sample in water where every atom of oxygen has been replaced with heavy oxygen, oxygen 18. After a while, you come back to your sample and you see that every oxygen in your cyclohexanone has been replaced with this heavy oxygen isotope. So how exactly did that happen? So probably the fact that we have trace amounts of acid there has something to do with that. So let's start our reaction, our mechanism here by thinking what is going to happen with our carbonyl if we were to protonate that. So I'm going to take my cyclohexanone and I'm going to show that that cyclohexanone is protonated by our acid, whatever that acid might be. This is going to give me a protonated carbonyl. The equilibrium does not favor the formation of the protonated carbonyl, but nonetheless it is going to happen to some extent. Now, when my carbonyl is protonated, it is going to be extremely electrophilic, which means that we are going to have a good chance of reacting with any kind of nucleophile that we have floating around, and the only reasonable nucleophile that we have is water water with our heavy oxygen. So I'm going to show this heavy water over here, which is going to be my nucleophile, and I'm going to show the nucleophilic attack onto my carbonyl, making a new carbon-oxygen bond. This is going to give me a protonated hydrate looking like this, which is going to quickly lose the proton to the environment, like so, giving me a neutral hydrate or geminal diol, where we have the OH group with the oxygen from my original cyclohexanone, and I have an OH from the new heavy water. So I already did half of this mechanism. I did manage to put the heavy oxygen onto our molecule, so now we need to figure out how to get rid of the OH and restore the carbonyl. Well, in order to do that, we're actually going to be going backwards in our mechanism, but now working with the OH group with the regular oxygen. So I'm going to take my acid from the environment and I'm going to protonate that OH group and make it into a decent living group. Now, that's going to give me a new protonated species, which, with the help of my heavy oxygen, going to get rid of our living group, like this, giving me a protonated cyclohexanone with the heavy oxygen, which now going to lose the proton to the environment, like that, giving me my final product, cyclohexanone with heavy oxygen incorporated. And you might be wondering, if every step in this reaction is an equilibrium, how come our molecule just doesn't go back and give us the original cyclohexanone? And you would be absolutely correct, it can definitely happen. However, for as long as we have excess of our water with heavy oxygen, statistically speaking, the chances of our molecule going back and reforming the original uh, cyclohexanone are going to be very small, which means that from the statistical perspective, for as long as we have excess of the heavy water, we are going to end up with our major product being the heavy cyclohexanone. Or rather, I should say cyclohexanone with heavy oxygen, to be more precise with my terminology. Have you ever seen isotope exchange reactions like that? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching till the very end. If you learned something new today, hit that like button to help promote this video and help more students see it. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.